Good day and welcome back to Chemistry Videos. My name is Clarissa Sorensen Unruh and today we're going to talk about how to calculate pH. So there are many ways to calculate pH. I have a squeaky marker again. Okay, there are at least four ways that I can think of calculating pH right off the top of my head. Okay, so it really depends on what you have. So the first thing you could do is if you have a strong acid or a strong base, right? Something that completely dissociates in water. If you have something that completely dissociates in water, like the acid or the base, right? So here's the acid and it's a single headed arrow with water on top of it. Here's H and A, then you actually have the ability to just calculate the pH based off of the initial acid or base amount given, right? So if you have an acid like I have here, if I had 0.1 molar HA, then you have to actually make an equivalency to the amount of H plus, right? 0.100 molar H plus. And I can say this because there's a one-to-one -one ratio between them. If there was like, if this acid was strong and gave off two H's, then I'd need to multiply my initial number by two, okay? And then I can just plug that into the pH formula. pH formula is pH equals the negative log of the H plus concentration, right? And I just plug that in and I get a number. And in this case, I would get, this is 10 to the negative first um, in terms of molarity, so I would get a pH of 1, okay? In terms of if it's a strong base, right, if it's a strong base, then we usually have a metal hydroxide, and if I have that in water, I know that that disassociates into the metal on the hydroxide. Again, you have to watch out for how much hydroxide you're making. But there, if you take the negative log of the OH minus concentration, you're getting the pOH. And you know, at 25 degrees Celsius, these two are related by the equation pH plus pOH equals 14. Okay, so you can calculate the pH with a strong acid or a strong base fairly quickly. The other way to calculate pH, or another way, I should say, I'm gonna call that one, we'll call this two, right? Maybe I'll find a different pink marker that's less squeaky, is if you have a weak acid or a weak base. If you have a weak acid or a weak base, then what characterizes them is that they do not completely dissociate in water. So you're having something like HA, which is aqueous, forming an equilibrium with its ions in water, okay? And in that case, it's not enough to just take the orig original concentration and work with that. In these cases, you have to make an ice table. You have to determine whether you can make the assumption. The assumption is, of course, to eliminate X from the denominator. And on previous videos, we've talked about how to determine whether you can make the assumption or not, right? So remember that this eliminates x from the denominator. And the same thing here, wow, I got real squeaky to this today. The same thing here as over here, but in this case, the pH is equal to the negative log of the H plus concentration at equilibrium, which is almost always the negative log of X, okay? In the case of a weak base table, you'd be finding the pOH if you took the negative log of X. And again, you'd have to go through pH plus pOH gives you 14, okay? Ice tables are required for weak acids and bases because of their um, incomplete dissociation. 
And that's kind of where that is, okay? All right, the third one is if you have a buffer, and you will know you have a buffer because you have an amount of an acid, so you'll get the concentration of HA, or moles and liters so that you can calculate HA, and you're given the concentration of A minus. You have to be given both in order to use the henderson hasselbach okay? Or you have to be finding the relative ratio of those two. And in this case, we got pH equals pKa. See, we're gonna write out the negative log of the Ka, but we can just call it pKa plus the log of A minus over HA. Okay, and that is excellent. You'll know you have those kinds of problems because you have HA and A minus, and you can actually build off of this, right? So if you add a strong base, or the concentration of OH minus, then you can actually use the Henderson-Hasselbach to do that. All that you have to do there is you write the original Henderson-Hasselbach again, right? pH equals pKa plus the concentration of A minus over the concentration of HA. But all you do with this concentration of OH minus, and it has to be in a concentration value because it has to be the same units as what you have. When you add strong base to a buffer, it adds to the base, right? And it subtracts or neutralizes out the equivalent amount of acid. Let me get my... And you can do that directly in the Henderson-Hasselbach. Same kind of deal if you have a strong acid. If you add acid, like, um, for instance, HCl or something along those lines. Then again, you use the Henderson-Hasselbach just as it is, but I'm gonna write the log down here. But in this case, the rules are reversed, right? So in this case, it adds to the acid. There you go and it neutralizes out the equivalent amount of base, right? So those, you can actually build on the Henderson-Hasselbach if you need to. And remember that there is actually a Henderson-Hasselbach, This we usually use the one that's for the acid, but just as equally we have a Henderson-Hasselbach that is for the base, right? Oh, you can't see that. Hmm. Perhaps I shouldn't write that there then. Oy, I thought I could be all sneaky and add it in in the end. Maybe we'll put it back down here, yeah? You guys can see that? Oh yeah, you can. POH equals PKB plus the log of the acid over its conjugate base. Right? So that's an equivalent Henderson Hasselbach, it's not the one that people usually use, but you could use this one and then use this equation to go back to 14, okay? There's that as well. Now, I've listed three different options for how to calculate pH. I told you that there were four. There's actually a fourth one as well. Let's go back over here and let's do, um, let's maybe do a quick little moment over here. Four, can you guys see that? Okay. And that's with ionic salts, right? Ooh, you can barely see that. It's a little tight, sorry. Okay, so in that case, what you do is you take the cation of the ionic salt and add it with OH minus out of water, right? Ionic salts in water is what we should really call this. Right, because you're gonna take the cation of the ionic salt and add it to the OH. You're gonna take the anion of the ionic salt and add it to H plus. And then you're gonna determine if the cation plus OH makes generally a strong base or a weak base. Anion plus H plus gives you a strong acid or a weak acid. The strong wins out. So for instance, if, or it may, they may cancel out, right? So if I had 
um, let's do KCL real, qu real quick, right? With KCL, that would give me, according to what I just did here, KOH, which is a strong base, and it would give me HCl, which is a strong acid. In this case, these two cancel out, and I would assume that when I put KCl in water, it would be neutral, right? But if I added something like, oh, let's say, um, KF, uh, KF is a little bit crappy. Let's not do that one. Let's do um, uh, potassium acetate. There you go. Ooh. Right? Then in this case, if you use potassium acetate, then again, you put KOH, that's still a strong base. But here, you're adding an H to the acetate ion, which makes acetic acid. And that's an organic acid, which means it's weak. And between the strong base and the weak acid, then this should be basic in its pH when you dissolve it in water. And those are the four major ways to calculate pH. It's a pretty full word, okay? Practice each of those, and then I'll see you again soon. Adieu.